he went to the high priest, no one higher in the land, and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he had found any there who were belonging to the way, that's what Christians were called before, we In an act of love and obedience and worship, we join our voices together as one, praying together that most beautiful prayer that your son taught us, the Lord's Prayer, which is also on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. I want to invite the children to start picking their way down, and I want y'all to help me make them feel welcome by seeing that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Alright, so Larry, you've got the box today. Which is supposed to be CJ. Yep, it's supposed to be from CJ. CJ's out of town. So you got something in there. I don't know what it is. Do you know what it is? Yeah. You okay? Good. So. CJ's Nana told me. Okay, CJ's Nana told you. Good. So you're gonna make us guess what it is. If Sissy can't guess, we'll make them guess. Okay. And then on the spot, I've got to come up with a lesson of what that has to do with the love of Jesus. If they can't guess, mm -hmm. I you tell them. That's right. If they can't guess, you tell them. All right. So what's the clue? CJ gave it to his Nana, and it protects Nana. Any thoughts? Um, one of his weapons? His toy weapons? His toy no. weapons? 
Okay, good. Any thoughts? Green dinosaur. What is it? A green dinosaur. A green dinosaur? No. No, that's a good guess, so CJ loves dinosaurs. Yes, it's got three T Rexes. Is it a prayer blanket? Is it a prayer blanket? No. No? Nana, do you have another clue for us? It's a distant relative of yours. Oh, good. Okay, I was getting kind of concerned about what was in the box. <laughs> Uncle Bob or so. Okay. A distant relative of a dinosaur. Any ideas? Any ideas? A check him? No. All right, I think you stumped us. Go ahead, open it and show us what it is. You guys. We don't know what it was. Ah, go ahead and pull it out. It is a dragon. Oh. A stuffed dragon. Roar. And for CJ and Amigo and Amigo. <laughs> Let's see that. Let me see. Thank you very much. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so, you know what's really neat about this? Not only is it kind of fun looking and whatnot. It even has a little fake fire coming out of his mouth. There you I thought that was a tongue at first, but it's not. But this was a gift that CJ gave to Nana. And you told me, why, why did he give it to Nana? To, to protect her. To protect her. I don't know who to protect her from. What? He seemed to think I need protection at that time. He seemed to think that you needed protection at that time. You know what? And, and that's, that's really important. Have any of you ever had a moment where a, a child or somebody has done something kind for you when you felt maybe vulnerable or hurt or grieving? Yeah. And just maybe somebody comes up to you and just does one nice thing for you. When I had a broken leg, someone gave me a present. When you had a broken leg, somebody gave you presents. That's right. Even in someone from my school. Well, you know what? The Bible tells us that we are made in the image of God. Okay. Now, some people say, does that mean that God has two hands and two feet and two eyeballs and boogers in his nose and all that stuff? And the answer is, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. But we do know that we are made in the image of God because we've been given special gifts. One of those gifts is creativity. We can make things. Another one of those gifts is the ability to love. And another one of those gifts from God is called compassion. Have you ever heard of compassion before? Have you heard of compassion? Do you know what it means? What's it mean? Okay. Compassion is the fact that you see someone else hurting and you feel bad for them or you hurt with them. Okay? And so CJ... He took one of his, his stuffies, probably one of his favorites, because he likes dragons. And he goes and he goes, if you ask him, he says his favorite story. Uh-huh. And he gave it to his Nana because he wanted to make sure she felt loved and safe. I tried to give Daddy a toy, but he didn't want it. Well, you know what? This is one of the ways that we are like God, because we are called to have compassion for one another. When you see somebody that's hurting, when you try to obey it, we're over here. We try to love them, and we try to be nice to them. And when you're hurting, one of the great things is you can know that God cares about what you care about. You know, in first service today, afterwards, somebody told me, I just feel like sometimes my worries are so little and so unimportant that I think I'm bothering God. But the Bible tells us that God is worried about everything that you think about and are worried about. Church, there's no worry too small that God doesn't actually care about it. And that's according to scripture. And so today, our challenge is, I want to challenge you guys with something, okay? I want you, sometime today, to do one nice thing for somebody else because you are made in the image of God and you want to be nice and have compassion for them like God has compassion for you. I to be next Dad, and give him all my toys. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and pray. 
Dear God, thank you for loving me. And being worried about the things I worry about. Teach me to be nice like you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See, All right. He's having a test tomorrow, so he's not going to be able to go to a man's party. I understand. Here, I want you to take this. Go give that back to Nana. And who had the box last week? I think you did. So, Abaya, you got the box for this week. I didn't even know this is Nana's. That's okay. I got another box in my office I'll give you, okay? Okay. All right. You guys go ahead.
And both of these stories are kind of important to me, not only because I really feel like God put them on my heart, something I went through over the last few weeks, but also because after I went through these, I realized that these same stories were actually very much a part of our scripture this morning. Um, so on Fridays, this last Friday, one of the things that I like to do is uh, by, by Friday, I've, I've kind of prayed about and researched and studied and started thinking through what I'm going to share on Sunday morning. And I like to kind of escape and kind of seclude myself and, and begin to write it all out and organize what I feel the Lord has put on my heart for you. And so this last Friday, I, I, I was doing just that very thing I left. Um, but to be honest, I, I was just constantly thinking about uh, our sweet Karen. And the fact that, that after 16 years, she's stepping away from her role at the church. And, and I'm sitting there thinking about, you know, what's it going to look like for us to get a new staff member? Uh, how are we going to train them up? Um, it just, I, I was being distracted. And so I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to go down to that new Dunkin' Donuts. You know, the one on 27 they just built? I'm going to go down to that new Dunkin' Donuts. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to work. It's going to be all right. So I get there, and I go up to the door, and I look in. And there's absolutely no tables. <laughs> it's only a pick-up-and-go place. I was like, okay, fine, all right, all right. I'll go to the other Dunkin' Donuts. So I get in my car, and I start heading up 27. You know the other one just after 10? Okay? And I get right up there, and there's a sign there that says, closed under construction. <laughs> Hokey dokey. So I just kind of kept going. And after a few minutes, I'm, I'm trying not to, but I'm just being distracted by now. I'm getting a little frustrated, you know. And, and after a few minutes, I find myself almost in the downtown, and I realize I have no clue where I'm driving to right now. I'm just kind of going. So I pull over, I get on my phone. I don't know why I wanted Dunkin' Donuts. It was just stuck in me that day. I don't know. I, I said, where's the nearest Dunkin' Donuts? And there was one near FSU. So I'm like, okay, crap, we'll go there. I get all the way over there, and I kid you not, I pull in. Great. Get out of my car, walk up to the door. We are closed during the summer while well, students are out of, of campus. Seriously? That's like three in a row by now, you know? So I'm like, I'm, I'm getting kind of frustrated at this point. I get back in my car and I start driving, and I'm like, okay, I'm really trying to. Work hard to focus on the Word of God for my people. I know that God has something for them in this, but I'm really kind of get distracted. And all of a sudden, I hear this ding, ding. My car was almost out of gas. <laughs> I never let my car get that low. I've never heard that sound in this vehicle before. <sighs> okay, fine. Go over, find a gas station, pull over, and I am near that wonderful area where gas is crazy expensive here in FSU. <laughs> Whatever, fine, just get some gas in the tank. I pick up my phone and I go, where's the nearest coffee shop? And it comes up with this coffee shop I've never heard of before. I was like, I'm going there, whatever. Start navigating over that area, and this guy starts tailgating me, I kid you not. So much so that I missed the turn. So I turn off the next way, you think I could go around the block and get there? No. So as I'm going down, the only way I can do this is go all the way down, look around, and come all the way back, because I'm my fan of you by now. <laughs> and, and as I'm looking over, there's a park, like a play park over here. And you can see through the buildings, I was like, I'm just going to park, I'm going to walk through the buildings, I'm going to find the coffee shop, I need to get to work here. So I, 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 I do so, I, I walk through and follow my GPS, and I cannot find this coffee shop for the life of me. <laughs> Finally, between the trees, I see a sign I notice that says, coffee. I'm like, I don't know if that's it, but it is not. And I go in there, and as soon as I walk in, the AC isn't working very well. Whatever. I order my coffee, I sit down. I look around, and I kid you not, there is New Age religious symbols everywhere. Wiccan symbols all over the walls, all this stuff. Don't bother me. I'm just going to do the Lord's work. I'm here, so be all good. Get on my computer. By the way, in that coffee shop, holding this book, okay, with my laptop that has a picture of our steeple on the back of it. 
I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to mind my own business. If somebody wants to talk, I'm get this done. And I'm so distracted, I can't keep my mind straight, you know. And then this lady walks up, and she stands right here next to me, staring out the window. And she's covered in ink, you know, tattoos, big gauge earrings. I cannot concentrate. And after about two minutes, that seems like forever, she leaves. And I'm sitting there going, okay, I'm in this coffee shop. They got all this stuff all over. I've got my Bible open. I've got my steeple on my computer. I was kind of waiting for some, you know, pushback, some rebuttal here. She didn't. It's like, okay, whatever. Went back to work. Can't concentrate. And the lady comes back. And she stands right here next to me again, like this close, staring out the window. And I'll be honest, I got a little feisty. And I said, can I help you? <laughs> and she says, I, I, I'm so sorry. My, my foster daughter is outside right now with the caseworker, and, and, and I, I own this shop. And, and she's being told right now that her biological mother never wants to see her again. I, I'm sorry. I, I know you didn't come here to hear my life story. I'm so sorry. I know you just came for coffee. And it just hit me. And I had to stop. I was like, honey, no, no, no. This is more important. And she's apologizing up, down, left, and right. I was like, no. This is important stuff. And she's all but crying in front of me. And the caseworker was right outside the window where I was sitting. I could do nothing but close my computer and just stop and pray for this beautiful baby who's being told right behind me that her mama never wants to see her face again. I had to pray for this lady who has a foster child and she's got a business to run and she's trying to be professional while watching this child she loves and cares for being told, your mommy doesn't really love you. I could do nothing but pray. And at that moment, I took out one of my business cards and I, and I wrote on the back of it something to the effect of, look, I found your shop by complete accident. I, I wasn't even meaning to find it. And, 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 and I've been distracted the whole time I was here. I can't focus on anything. But when you told me that, I knew why God had put me in this place. And I just want you to know that I stopped and I closed my computer and I was praying for you and praying for your daughter. And I just want you to simply know that God loves you. That's all I wrote. And when I was done, she, she come in and out, in and out of the cafe two, three times by then. I, you could just see her being nervous. And, and I... I was, I was going up to the cashier, I was going to say, here, give this to your boss later. She just happened to be standing right there at the register the moment I was walking out the door. And again, remember where I'm standing here, okay? This place is covered with literally pagan symbols, New Age religious stuff, Wiccan stuff all over the walls, everywhere. This is the owner I'm talking to. And I've got to be honest with you, I struggled at first. Yes, I was going to pray for her, no problem. But to write on my card... God sent me here to you, to a place where this lady was clearly not a Christian. And then to walk up to her during this moment of pain and vulnerability, hand her my card with my name on it, by the way, and where I work at. The Lord hit me over the head like a ton of bricks. And he said, you've got to stop assuming people don't love me. You have to stop assuming that people don't love me. And I looked her square in the face and I just said, Honey, I'm praying for you. And I handed her the card. And just, she went, Thank you so much. And it was just like a movie. I started walking out the door. And this teen girl comes in covered in black, shoulder necklace, chains everywhere, overdone makeup. And her makeup was just dripping down her face with tears. And I walk out that door, trying really hard not to make this all about me. That's not what this is about. And the Lord set this whole thing up. I disappear between the buildings where they can't even find me. And I get my car in me. And as I'm driving back, I realize that with all my worries and concerns about Salem, about Sunday, about all this stuff, you know, it's nothing. Right now, my worries are pitifully right now in this, and I haven't 
been able to shake us. And it was interesting because as I'm driving, stunned by this, it hit me that that's exactly what's in our scripture today. Um, crazy uncles in your family or moms or somebody like that that, that they're to them you go hey I gotta warn you before we walk in <laughs> my goal is to be that person yeah. But then again, we also have some people in our life that give us something. That their parents say or do, they're going to move the narrative of the conversation back to everyone's out to get them. This little concern of what they meant what they didn't mean. They think that people y'all know anybody like that? That's, that they just live that no matter what you do or what you say in the narrative of whatever That they cannot shake it. They can't get out of that place. That they're, they're, there's a fear and anger in them. And, and I'm saying, you know, about, about this happening. And, and, and I don't know if any of you. And I'm not saying that I do, but I do. Okay? And just to just to sit there and watch that no matter what you say, it brought so deeply into that this this hateful rhetoric this narrative that nothing you That whatever you say, if you're one of the people or you're the one that's blind. And if it is, I told you so. In the world, and somehow they will change it around to be about their narrative. and cooking, and by the end of that small conversation, their narrative, they're so stuck, so angry about it. Being in that brain, I think being there 20 a week. That's got to be so painful. That's got to be so How do we get out of that? Some of us are sitting here right now and you're literally Some of you are brave enough to say, you know, honestly I struggled with some of those anxiety-driven or depressing thoughts. I want to be that. And what 
What's amazing is our scripture this morning. Story too, and it tells us how realistically be free of those things. So stick with me here. Quickly, but I'm going to go back to our. If you remember from the last few weeks, we, we've been talking about when the, when the disciples left Jerusalem after uh, uh, Samuel was marked. up in, in Samaria and God does some up, um, walking down the road he's riding in the carriage and he shares the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with them and this this is what the word meanwhile means Stephen was martyred there, agreeing with everything as everyone put their cloaks at his feet. And with Saul during that was still grieving the Lord's disciples. I think of that person that we just described. It's ingrained in them. It's a ground that hate. The anger is ground into their very being. They're part of them. They breathe it out. Out murderous threats. There's nothing you can say to change his mind right now. That's the Lord's disciples. He was fire for the Jewish people in all the world. The letters to the synagogues in Damascus. So that if he found The way, which by the way, the where Christianity came out. Many people believe, even though we don't believe, because of John 14, 6, Jesus Christ said, I am the and the light, the only. And Saul was going to drag him back. And old women. Where if a man does something wrong, he pays for it. And if a woman does something wrong, whether a man is prisoners to Jerusalem. This also raises the question, why did Saul need a letter? Well, the answer is Damascus wasn't in Israel. It is in modern-day Syria. You didn't know that. It's to the northeast of Israel. He needed this letter, this warrant. As he neared Damascus, a light from heaven flashed to the ground and 
heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, you me. Who? And I've always wondered, why does he call him Lord? He doesn't believe in him, doesn't even know who he is. Until the 14th century, the phrase Lord. Respect, but you don't know their title. The Lord of the land, or something like that. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go to the what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood heard the sound but did not see anyone. Make this up or imagine this in his brain. Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes he could see understand God did not strike him God brought out the blindness of God just brought to the surface. Pain and his suffering in his narrative. And I am justified in this. this I'll go to the ends of the earth. I'll kill whoever it's. Blindness into Damascus. He was blind and then this is where our first scripture ends. And the rest of in Damascus there was a disciple named Anna. The Lord told him on straight street. And named Saul for him. Now, if you all know me, I, I love to nerd out. Straight street still exists in Damascus today. We can trace it back. All right. As a matter of fact, there is a street called the Church of Hananiah. Is the Aramaic word for? Okay. Actually, not straight. Kind of funny. Uh, verse 11. The Lord told him, Go to the house of the street and ask for a for he is praying. A man named Ananias come. Uh, to restore Lord and I I answered I, I have reports about this man and holy people in Jerusalem Here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who right now. 
Okay, imagine God saying to you, I want you to be vernacular for a minute. He's one of the leading religious leaders of Satanism. Not only working against the church, they bombed Christian church. And the Lord said, all by yourself. Pray for him. This is what's going on for Ananias. And to be honest, in this minute, I... Oh, wait, 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 God, hold on. For him, and now he can even rationalize this. Not only because of, of the, the clear... ...through this, but it would have been so... ...to just blow off that lady standing next to I've got staff members who are resigning. And time and time again, all day, I'll pray for you goodbye. Clearly, oh my God, because look at the stuff on your wall. I was so the task of being a preacher to be led by God and minister. I could have convinced myself so easily another distraction I need to focus on really hurting people. There's a baby outside. I don't love you. And God wants me to do something. And there's wicked Curtis and I. Are so you going to rationalize this away? Verse 14. From the chief priest to a your name. But the Lord This isn't a suggestion. The man and is my chosen instrument. My name to the Gentiles. People from Israel, how much he must suffer for. Look, you, you, this is about. I'm not here to tell you your job, pray for him. Don't justify yourself, just pray for him. Look, I'll. I'll deal with that. That's not your job. Look, I hope and this mama become I hope that they go out to the end and they are changed in the power and even if they're not I'm honored that God would humble me in the moment. No, God set me up by the wrong things. God was being a good administrator, but I wasn't being verse 17. Whew, again, place his hands on Saul. On that Satanistic leader, Brother Saul, that were so people don't love God. Jesus, who appeared to you here, has sent me immediately something like scale. 
that hate. It was that narrative that he that he was justified. Baptized. And he gave us strength. So at once he began to that Jesus is the Son of God. Y'all, that's important stuff. I told you. You know somebody you love that's just so lost. How to get out of that. Go. Stop there because for some of us, we can be blunt. I can be I can completely miss something. And somebody's life won't be impacted because I'm so justified. Let me tell you of this space. The thing that shook both of these guys loose simply is this. Before the Lord. Until you have a personal, very real encounter with the Holy Spirit. Your loved ones are not going to change. Real encounter with the Holy Spirit. How do I want that moment? Humble yourself. The Lord will reveal Himself to you. The world calls humility. They can't even make up their mind. Humble yourself before the Lord. He will reveal Himself to you. You want to have an experience with God. You want to be close, close to Him. You you want to, you want to work on purging away some close relationship with Him to find that peace. What does that look like for you? Look, I don't know if for I just need to say please, that baby girl and her mama. But man, he popped me one good upside. I'm going to accept you, Lord. Amen. It's kind of scary for me because they're clearly accepting this. Seriously, join me. I don't know for you, maybe the word I'm assuming people don't love me, says the Lord. The word is and he will make himself known. I don't know what it is. What has happened to me? Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for flying me out of my shell. Just be even a small part. I don't care if they don't even remember my face, let alone my name. Fall in love with you. She 
is loved, and she is not abandoned. I can't imagine what's going on in her heart. She tries to do what's right and help her to. In the same way, Lord. And I know it hurts. And if I'm holding on to a narrative, or blindness, Lord, Lord, help me to be shaken free of it. And I pray the same. As we pray this in Christ's name, amen. Yeah.